Oh, hey, Junior. All right, Pa. Hey, I was wondering, uh, what's this Sunday's video gonna be on? You know what? I haven't really given it much thought. I've been so busy. I should probably just go out in the junkyard and take a look around. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Cameraman, follow me. Oh, here's a good candidate right here, this old blower. Yeah, maybe I'll save that for another time. Oh, concrete finisher. Yeah, that's pretty old. You know what, I think we did one on one of them already. Ah, got a whole line of garden scratches here we could do one on. Well, kind of late to do that now. There's some more stuff over there. Let me go over there and take a look. Ah, one of these lawn boys would be a good one to do a video on. Uh-oh, wait a minute. There was one there, I remember. It was an old one, self-propelled. I wonder what happened to it. I don't remember selling it to anybody. I don't see it anywhere. Ah, I bet you I know what happened to it. Ronnie, open up. Are you in there? Go away, we're closed. Nobody's here. Oh, okay, I'll come back another time. Wait a minute. Open this door, I need to talk to you. What do you want? I'm looking for a lawnmower of mine that's missing. I don't have any lawn boy, all right? Go away. Hey, hey, wait. I didn't say it was a lawn boy. Open up the door. Ready? Oh, you looking for me? I'm down here. Come and get me. Blah, 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 blah. Open the door. Oh, I'm real scared. Oh, wait, wait, get my hand on you. Oh. Oh, too slow, old man. Oh. Oh. Open this door! <laughs> oh, where'd he go? Oh, oh. Oh. Done playing games? All right. You can take the mower back. Just don't hurt me. I didn't do nothing to it. What do you mean you didn't do anything to it? You defiled it by sticking one of your stickers on there. Now I gotta look at you while I'm working on this thing. Jared Echo here, and today's video is gonna be on this here lawn boy. This old lawn boy. So this is a model 8251. And the serial number starts with 715. So when I looked it up, it said it was a 1974, but it had a different serial number range. It was lower. So this might be a 1975. But it's a Lawn Boy Deluxe with self propel And it's complete, it's a complete mower. So let's see if we can get this thing running today. So first thing I'm going to do is check and see if it's got compression, which it feels like it does. And then of course the next thing you're going to want to do is check and see if it's got spark. We'll put our spark tester on there. And it's got spark, so that's good. So then, you know, we only need one other thing, and that's fuel. So I got my little syringe with some two-cycle mix. Oh, look at that air cleaner. Looks pretty new. It's not all, you know how they, they fall apart? They get, like, rotted. So let's give it a little... A little shot of some gas. Let me tilt it up a little bit so it can get in there. Open the butterfly a little. And let's see if it'll lick off. I got this on. 
that because I had spark. I don't know, can we see in there? How's it look? Don't look bad. Looks pretty clean. All right, so let's try pouring some gas in it. I'd be very, very surprised if this thing was stored properly and would actually run. Because it'll be a short video then. Let's see if the primer works. We should see gas come up through the center when I push this primer. I can't see. I don't see nothing. The gas valve's open. Nope. No gas. Let's pump a little more in there and see if it might lick off and stay running. Alright, let's see. somebody it's been sitting out there in the rain and snow and all we did was put gas in it and prime it and it started all right let's take a little peek underneath here and see if we see any wetness because these bottom seals like to leak and it's not wet I mean the blade isn't really that dull See if it'll start up again. <clears throat> Let's put the air cleaner back in. Turn it on. See if it'll start without priming it or not.
cut that pretty tall grass and what do I got it on here? Looks like it's on number five. And that one's on number four. Let's put it up all the way on number six. And we'll go through some more of that tall stuff. mowed through that tall grass and sounded to me like it wasn't running at 3600 rpm so let's take it back in the shop put the tachometer on it and see what it's running at so for those of you that don't know you grass rats watching this is a like a speed control it's a lever you pull it out and it runs at a lower rpm and you push it in it runs at higher don't ask me why they have that because, you know, you're going to want to run it at top RPM when you're cutting grass. So I got my tachometer. So let's see what we're running at. boost up that RPM some. So with any governor system, you got a governor spring. So right here is the end of the spring. And this is that lever. So if we bend this lever and put more tension on that spring, it's going to raise the RPM. And then when I pull that lever out, see it releases away from the spring and then that would run at a slower RPM. So I just need to reach in there with a pair of long pliers and bend on that lever a little bit. And then we should be able to get some more RPM out of it. All right, let's check the RPM now that I bent on it. but I went back and looked in the lawn boy manual and it said 3200 on high and 25 on low so we're at 32 and 28 which 28 is probably better so yeah we're right within specs there you have it all right there you go grass rats bent on that lever a little bit I got it up to 3200 rpm just like the manual says kicked it down to low speed it was at 2800 they recommend 25, but 28 is probably better. So let's uh, go out and cut some more grass with it. Then we're going to do one other thing to it. When I bring it back in, I want to show you. Stay tuned. All right, I still got it set at its highest level. We'll cut, cut some grass, and then I want to lower it down, and we'll see how it does.
It was hogging through there. So I'm gonna go on three. Pretty low. Don't have enough power. That's why you got to set it all the way up when you're cutting that tall grass. All right, but it, it cut through that tall grass when I had it on six. Let's go back in the shop. So I don't know if y'all noticed when I had that self-propel working, I was getting one wheel peel and the other one wasn't grabbing as good. There is an adjustment to put more tension on those rollers that contact the wheel. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust that. So we have to take this back wheel off. So I gotta get some snap ring pliers Take that snap ring off. And another thing they used to make back in the day is they made bigger diameter rollers. They were called high speed rollers. So you could go to your lawn boy dealer and you can get a roller that was bigger and fatter and rounder. And you would stick that, drive the roll pins out, take the old rollers off, put the new rollers on, and then you could uh, go a little faster. But again, depending on, you know, if you're trying to feed too much grass to something, like if the grass is real tall, and you're trying to feed more grass to it than the blade can cut it, you know, it's going to give a bad cut. You know, that might be fine if, if the grass is kind of short and you're only cutting off a little bit. But if you're cutting real tall grass and you're trying to go too fast, it doesn't cut very good, and then you got to cut it twice. So that's why you got to go slow. And also, I'll show you on these... Uh, Long boys, you know how to grease them, how to grease this drive system, which is very simple. I'll get a wrench and we'll take that off and I'll show you. So as you can see, these rollers are pretty wore down. They could use another set. I don't know if I got a set or not. But you don't have to take this off to do what I'm showing you. Uh, it's just easier to show you with this cover off. So on the end of this roller, as you can see, there's this plug that's got a screwdriver slot. So what you would do is you take this plug out and you pump grease into this roller and then when you screw the screw in, it forces the grease through the bearing. So let's see if there's any grease in here and it should come out through this bearing. This is a needle bearing, by the way, in that plastic cover. Yeah, see there's grease coming out down here in the bottom. And they use like a white lithium grease is what they would use back in the day. You can see a little bit of white. And then when you get all the way down to the bottom, you know, when the screw would bottom out, then that tells you that, okay, you need to remove the screw, fill this back up with grease. Now that would all be in the manual that you got with this mower, but again, those manuals, nobody reads them. So see, I'm bottomed out right now. So that's how you grease it. That's how you grease the drive bearings. And this has actually got a drive shaft. There's a drive shaft in here that runs the drive. Now there was an older model of this, probably earlier, and it would have a pulley on this shaft and a belt would come up through this cover 
and there was a pulley on here. The flywheel nut actually had a groove pulley on it. And there would be some spring-loaded idlers on here, almost like a mule pulley set up on a lawn tractor. And then it had a little skinny belt that ran along, and that's what would spin this. I should look and see if I got some, some rollers laying around. I could always get some from South Ham and Charlie might have some. What did I do with that wrench? Here it is. But that's how you grease the dry. All right, so when you're gonna make this adjustment on the uh, drive, close the gas, shut the shutoff valve, and then I'm gonna take the air cleaner out because I'm gonna flip it up and gas is gonna pour out of it. I having a hard time working on this mower with this guy looking at me all the time. So snap ring pliers, take the wheel off, And down here, this bolt here, this is slotted. This is a shoulder bolt, so this thing will move. But this bolt here, it's on a slot. So you can move this engagement. So we gotta loosen this, loosen this up here. And then we're gonna loosen this bolt nut. So you got half inch on this side and on the other side is 7 16. So I gotta get a 7 16 which I should have did ahead of time. See what I mean with the gas leaking out? That's why you gotta shut the gas off. Now, if those rollers are worn real bad, doing this adjustment isn't gonna help. And then you just need to buy new rollers. All right, you just gotta loosen it pretty good so you can move it on that slot. Let me release this all the way. I think I gotta loosen it some more. Alright, I'm gonna take this all the way off so I can show you. Hear them birdies chirping? Your birdies are living on top of that lift I made. They're babies. Let's get this off. So you got a star washer, a flat washer, and there it's a locking nut. So see how it's slotted? And look, I couldn't get it to move because it was all full of crap. All that crap in there was keeping it from moving. Because I'm like, this thing should slide back and forth. Why isn't it doing that? And you can see it's a little shoulder bolt. Fine thread. So there's this washer was under there. And then the shoulder went in there. Alright, so what we need to do is you got to push, kind of push on this so you can get it to move up in that slot. So let's go put this stuff back on. Octopus fingers. So you put a pair of vice grips in here. So you can hold that tension off of there so you can move that in that slot. Now you can go ahead and tighten this up. And have these ratchet wrenches. Back when it, we were doing this. And then you'll see how much more force it'll put on those rollers. Another problem with this dry system is if the grass is wet and the wheels would get wet and the rollers would get wet, this drive wouldn't work very well. 
Yeah, I mean, it would help, but you still kind of had to help it through the grass. Stick the wheel on. You're supposed to take this cover off when you do this. Which I should probably do before I break it. Pull up on this, tighten this down. how much more force it'll put on it. It really digs into the tire. Just by adjusting that, that screw. All right. Let's put this all back on. And we'll try it again. set all the way up on six again wheels are digging in real heavy just mowed right through it I wasn't helping it at all see no tricks there's no nobody out in the woods with a string pulling on it <laughs> how do you know <laughs> no there's nobody with a string all right let's go over a couple more things on the old lawn boy I like this mower show you how to check those exhaust ports. Now I'm pretty sure these are clear and clean because it's, it's running good but we're going to check them anyway because you grass rats need to know. And there's a few little tips and tricks if you're a lawn boy fanatic or you're thinking about getting a lawn boy and restoring one of these you're going to need to know all these little tips. So again we're going to shut the fuel off because we're going to be tipping it We'll take the air cleaner and all that off again. Now, which way you tip it, um, you know, if you tip it towards the carburetor like this, of course the gas is going to run out. If you tip it towards the spark plug, of course whatever fuel is in the carburetor is going to run towards the head. So then when you put it back on its wheels, you know, it's going to be flooded and it may take you a bunch of pulls to get it running. So that's why it's better to, to shut off the gas, take the air cleaner out so you don't get it all soaked with gas. And I'm gonna put one of these mats under there again, which I should have did this last time, and we'll tip it up. 
And now we need to take the blade off, which I believe has a 15 16 socket on it. And that's what it wants. So you need to get an impact, take that off. And you're also going to need an air hammer with a pointy tip. I got a half inch air operated impact over here. Now if you only got hand tools instead of uh, impacts, then you're going to have to jam the blade. You're going to have to hold the blade and take it off like that. Make sure because this, this mower has no safeties on it like the new ones with the bale. So if you're going to be messing around and spinning this blade under here, make sure it's in the off position and take the spark plug wire off. And tuck it out of the way. Just don't take it off like that because it could still jump that gap. So try to get that plug wire out of the way. If you're doing it by hand, well, you should just do it anyway. All right, here we go. Now sometimes, just by zipping it off, it'll, it'll knock this hub off. But if not, that hub is really on there because it's on a taper. Or if you have to change that bottom seal, it's better to use a air hammer. See, then it pops it right off that taper that quick. And then a 7 16 so you may have to clean this up because it might be full of grass packed on there. You might have to take a little wire brush or a screwdriver and clean the head of them nuts off. And then with a 7 16 socket, zip them off. And then that'll take the muffkin off because that's the muffkin right there. Now those, those muffkin bolts, they got a square head that locks in on the other side. So sometimes you got to put your hand back there. And of course they're all sticky. Yeah, I got to push that one back in. See, I'm holding it with my finger so I can get it off. this one under here. Now we can pull that muffin off. Now if it's like this one, there we go. Now there's a bunch, oh look, there's a bunch of carbon in there. So this will make it run a lot better if you clean all that crap out of there. So it's kind of time consuming, but you want to get that out. So you may have to use a screwdriver, and a scraper. Now you gotta remember, the two cycle oils and stuff we have now burn a lot cleaner than this old, that old Lomboy oil and gas mix. And our newer synthetic two cycle oil, you know, will we'll run in these old 32 to 1, 16 to 1s without damaging them because it's almost like a multi-ratio. Look at all that nastiness in there. So you're gonna take some time, clean all that nastiness out of there. And if you're using the new modern two cycle stuff where you just mix like a bottle to a gallon and it's good for 40 or 50 to one. Since this engine doesn't rev real high, it'll, it'll protect it. It'll be good for 32 to one. You're not gonna burn up the mower, don't worry. Or you can buy the, 
You can buy that stuff in a bottle where you gotta measure it out and mix it according to the ratio. And then you can just do it that way. You know, how many ounces? I think it's eight for 32 to one. I'm pretty sure it's eight ounces to a gallon. Now look in here. This is where the exhaust ports are. And they're pretty clean. And look, that piston, it's pretty scored up. As old as this thing is. And it runs and starts pretty easy, even after we were mowing that grass and got it hot. These things, you know, could take some abuse back then and keep running. Let's see if we can spin it over a little bit. Yeah, it's got a pretty good score mark going up and down. That's probably carbon scoring. The rings look okay. It's probably some carbon. Some hard carbon got on that piston and would uh, scratch it up like that. As long as the rings aren't stuck, you know, just the piston is just guiding it up and down through the bore. Like I said, it was starting every time. Usually if it was scored or had a stuck ring, it might start, but then when it get hot and you shut it off and go to restart it, it wouldn't have enough compression. So, all right, so now we're gonna get all that cleaned out of there. I'll hit it with a little air, blow some of that carbon out there a little bit. And then there's a certain, well, I'm gonna sharpen the blade too, since I got it off. Blow some of that out of there. Look at all that carbon. Been sitting in there. Some of this, some of this carbon is from 1974. So there's our blade not too bad so I'm gonna put it in my vise and I like to sharpen these blades now at, at the shop with my four inch grinder because that blade grinder I got over there it's real noisy and it takes it takes longer I can do them faster with a four inch grinder Let's get this out of the way. My snap ring pliers back. So this is the get that compression test. So this is the wheel I use on my four inch grinder. It's like a polishing wheel. And it'll grind. So you just stick it in the vise. And just follow that angle, that's all. It makes quick work of it. And it makes a lot less noise than that bench grinder. Now I wanna hit the back side of it. And it's uh it's sharpened up the the shave with. Now don't worry about the nicks. I know there's some some you know shops or People may say, well, you gotta grind those nicks out of there. Well, if they're sharp nicks, what, what difference does it make? So some guys will tell you to grind those nicks out of it and then come in and sharpen it. 
And again, that really doesn't matter. Look, it's nice and sharp. It even looks good with the grind. Look at that. Now one other thing we want to do is balance it. So I got a blade balancer over here. Now this is a fancy one. You're probably not going to have one like this, but they make a cheap one. And look, it's just a little heavy on this end. So if you want it perfectly balanced, you just either grind more off of this edge or you can grind it off of here. Plus by using this, this hand grinder, this blade doesn't get real hot either when you're sharpening it. Look at that. Just a little heavy on this end now. I just took a little bit too much off, but it's it's close enough. If you're, you know, want to get it closer, then take some off of this edge. Close enough. All right, now we got to put the blade on because there's a certain way it goes on the lawn boy. So what they tell you in the manual is to have the piston at top dead center all the way at the top, so we can do that by looking looking through the ports. That's top dead center right there. And then we're going to put our muffkin back on. Got to line up this with this. Tighten the nuts. Like I said, you're going to have to use another hand to push those muffin bolts through if they're not, if they're moving on you. Get them in their little square slots. Some birdies chirp, boy. Don't tighten them too tight because they're only quarter 20. Now, they want the blade 90 degrees from the piston. So if you look, this engine's on an angle. It's running on an angle on this deck. It's running off to this way. It's not totally centered on it, it's at an angle. So you just got to kind of look and make sure you got it as close as you can to 90 degrees with the piston. So the spark plug's like right here and we want it 90 degrees. Now just get it as close as you can, it's not that critical. And the reason they want that is they claim it cuts down on vibration. We got a sharp blade, we got our muffin cleaned out. Let's try it one more time, and then we'll be done.
There's another antique mower that we had gotten, that we'd got running again. Didn't need much. All we had to do was put gas in it. You know, got the original spark plug and everything in it. But we did go over some maintenance aspects. You learned about greasing the rollers and adjusting that drive, uh, taking the blade on and off, how to get that hub on and off. So you did learn a few things. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Terrell, here I am. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram with your antique lawn boys. Come on, come on. Don't drive by themselves, come on. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel. We got all kinds of stuff. We even got these Ronnie stickers, which uh, I was, I was, you know, I fought, fought the team on that. I said, we don't, I don't want that sticker, so I'm probably going to tear that one off. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! 1974, 75, long boy lives again. Runs good, even with a big score in the piston. Still runs good, fires right up. Yeah. I was gonna get rid of this mower, but I think I'm gonna keep it now. That mower should be right up. Oh, great. Another mower missing. Well. I guess I know who took that one too. 155. Who? You! What? I didn't steal no MOA. That's probably the money you made when you sold it. That's my money. No, I, so I just sold a different MOA. Come here, you! Oh, 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 I swear it wasn't me. You're about ready to go over that fence. Whoa, 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 hold on, Pa. Hold on. Whoa, whoa. I found it. It was on the other side of the yard. I think Elkskins misplaced it when he filled out the tag. It's over there. We got it. You're lucky. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you're lucky that I didn't throw you over that fence. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey, 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 did you like those stickers that you just saw in the video? Well, guess what? You can get them at Terrell's online store. It's got my face on one of them. So go and pick yourself up some. You won't get ripped off. I promise.